Alright, so the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about on the top of the pile here is Heroes in Crisis number one. Uh, Heroes in Crisis number two is out now, so go get it. Honestly, just go get it now. Stop watching. Go. Local comic book shop. Find it. Um, it's written by Tom King, art by Clayman, uh, and colors done by Mori. And this is an awesome book. So I'm always typically a fan of the crisis in the DC Universe. For those of you who don't know, a crisis within the DC Universe is always sort of a, a huge point. Every character is involved. These will have long-reaching effects in the universe. The first one I ever read was called Final Crisis, and that is... Well, it resets a lot of the world, a lot of characters die, um, and it sends Batman back in time, which is how sort of... Well, a lot ends up happening. It bleeds right into uh, the New 52 and everything. My favorite, though, is actually Identity Crisis, and it ties into Heroes in Crisis. So, most crises is Crisis on Infinite Earth, uh, Final Crisis. They're all these big events, big wars, some big bad is coming to just destroy everything, and the DC Universe, or the multiverse, needs to get together to stop it in some way. Heroes in Crisis is a much smaller scope story in that it is more personal and it falls to that similarity of Identity Crisis which I loved and to this day it's probably one of my favorite DC books so Identity Crisis for those of you who don't know is basically about uh, a rape that happens so uh, Dr. Light goes out and attacks um, what's his name? So Dr. Light... Hmm, cut this part. So Dr. Light goes out and he attacks, I believe it's uh, Mr. Elastic's wife, and he rapes her, and I do so believe he murders her. And what happens is, not that some big bad comes, because he's honestly like a, a B-rated villain. He's not that big of a deal. But what that does is bring into question the morality of action and, and crime fighting, especially for all these heroes. And when all these heroes have to finally decide, okay, what amount of revenge is okay? We are heroes, right? Green Arrow, hero. Mr. Elastic, he's a hero. Um, they're not villains. They can't go out and seek justice by blood. They can't go and kill people. They're not the Punisher. They're not, you know, so many Marvel heroes that flippantly kill people. That's not their code. They do not kill, and that's the whole point. So when they're faced with one of their own being raped and murdered, you have to start questioning, well, is it okay now? And they all do. All the heroes. And the, my favorite part is that this book doesn't really bring in Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. It actually focuses on... Uh, Green Arrow, uh, Mr. Elastic, and a bunch of others where... Okay, hold on. Long game, man. There we go. Okay. Scrap that. Um, cut over. Alright, so take two for Heroes in Crisis number one. Alright, guys. So the next issue I wanted to talk to you all about was Heroes in Crisis number one. Uh, issue two should be out now, so go and get it. Stop watching and go. This is issue one, which is I'm going to summarize for you quickly here and give my review of it because it's I think it's got a lot of potential and it's actually a great opening issue for the series. So it's written by uh, Tom King, who's currently doing Batman and a lot more for DC. Art by Clayman, who's a fantastic artist. 
uh, and colors by uh, Mori, who does well a lot of colors for a lot of people, and I think he does a bang up job in this as well. So for those of you who don't know, for DC, whenever there is a crisis, so the the biggest ones are Identity Crisis, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Final Crisis, uh, and many more. A crisis is always a long-reaching, universe-changing storyline, something that impacts characters throughout. And some of them are about giant big bad armies coming like Final Crisis or uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths in which the multiverse is expanded into one thing, or, or Final Crisis where Darkseid comes and plans to destroy Earth and the multiverse gets involved in order to stop him. The other types of crisis are my favorite. My last one is Identity Crisis, and I think Heroes in Crisis is going to be on a similar level. Because it deals more with psychology than it does brawn. So, Identity Crisis is basically about Elongate's man wife. Now, she is, you know, he's off doing his thing, fighting crime, when someone breaks into their apartment and kills her. So Elongate Man gets back and he's torn up because she appears to have been murdered by Burns. Um, so they of course go to Dr. Light who is sort of a villain who does that. And the way everything works out, it really makes you question when is the stopping point? Can we seek vengeance within justice? Is revenge within justice? Was it okay for them to reach out and kill him? Because it's a very serious thing, it, and the way this comic handles that, I like the most, because it doesn't really involve Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. It focuses on the B-level characters who talk about what's okay and what's not okay morally for a superhero to do, for any some, anyone in a, a justice-oriented position. And it gets really tense really quickly because of that, and it gets an uncomfortable line gets blurred. Now, Heroes in Crisis, which I think is amazing, and like I said, I think it's got a lot of potential for an amazing storyline. It's going to be nine issues as of right now. Um, it sits on mental health. So, along the same lines of the you know, psychology, the, psycho the psychological thrill, but also the, the personal hit, right? Not just, oh, an army's coming where a lot of us are going to die, boo-hoo, it's it strikes you at the core. Something's wrong. Something goes on so horribly wrong, it's not fair play anymore. It's just wrong. And it, we get to see how the heroes deal with it. So the cover, for those of you who haven't seen it, pictures many, many, many heroes. Uh, up in the front is Superman with Harley Quinn, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Booster Gold. And there, Superman's holding a mask, and it looks like a white cloth that's been just soaked in what appears to be blood. And they're in a cornfield, and way back in the back, uh, behind all of these different heroes, is a small house, like a farmhouse. Almost like the Kent farm, but even smaller. So what this series opens with is the investigation of a murder, and Superman's blasting off to this farm, while Booster Gold is sitting in a diner, and just, he looks like hell. He looks mopey, he's sad, and Harley Quinn walks in. And she looks just about the same. And they have it out because of what happened at this farmhouse. So when Superman arrives there, he looks out in the field and he sees that there are superheroes down and dead. And throughout the comic, we do see little interview sketches with them about why they were at the farmhouse, what's going on. And we find out that the farmhouse is basically a facility for these characters, these heroes, to get help mentally. Because, I mean, I mean, Superman might be exempt from this, maybe even Wonder Woman, because of his invulnerability. But they see a lot of stuff every day. People die every day. Maybe Superman's got the worst of it, because he can hear it all. He understands it all better than anyone else. So all these heroes deal with PTSD, deal with death and loss, deal with their own personal failures, because they couldn't save everyone. And this place was supposed to be a safe zone for them to express that, to get that out, to work past it, so that they didn't snap and go crazy. Well, as we figure out real quick by the end of this issue, something's gone wrong, and someone who they were helping turned and killed them all. Now, the art in this issue is ridiculous. Um, once again, not from a super detailed perspective, but very, very good. 
there's a couple shots that I absolutely love. So, overall, I mean, Clay Mann is always a spectacular artist. Any time you see his name on a book, M-A-N-N, -N, pick it up. Buy it. For God's sakes, buy it. Don't just pick it up, look through it. Just buy the damn thing. It's, it's that good. And if he's worked on it, I promise you it will be a good book. If nothing else, visually, but typically he does work with great writers. So there's a shot, as mentioned, Harley Quinn and Booster Gold fight in this issue. There's this lovely shot early in the book, and what I like most about it is the level of detail. So we can actually see sing singular muscles in Booster's arms, uh, in his leg, you can see the difference between the, the thigh muscles um, as well as in his body. The small details of his fingers, the marks in his gloves. But beyond that, it's actually the light emanating from his fists that I got, that's going to sound weird, but the most excited about. Because artistically, it reflects like crazy, and that's where Maury's art shows off the biggest. Because he's the color. He applied all the colors for this. So not only do we get, you know, Booster's fist lighting up, but we also see that, if you really pay attention, that light is reflected off of his costume. Because it's spandex, it's, re it's reflective and stretchy. It, and it, having that level of detail adds so much to the reality of it, and it helps really bring you in and appreciate what's going on. My next favorite shot uh, is this one. So this is Superman arriving on the scene. And what I like most is that Superman takes up a good chunk of the page. He's almost as tall as the whole page, from the tip of his foot, because he's floating in the sky, to about the top of his head. A little bit more page goes beyond his head, but not much, because he's big, he's important. And we do see around him, obviously, his actual eagle eye view. So the house looks tiny compared to him. Um, and then you just see bodies everywhere. But what I enjoy most is that we see his vision. So in front of him is a zoomed in scope. It's a circular th thing that's his actual sight. And you can see that he's inspecting specific things. And it's just really interesting to see because of the duality of it. You have Superman, who's this huge guy flying in the sky like a god, and he's looking down on this small farmhouse, but instead of seeing everything tiny, right, like everyone's ant, he takes the time to actually zoom in and see it in big, he sees the big picture to the point where some of them are almost as big as him if they weren't crumpled up and murdered. And what I found most impactful, and I swear to God I heard this when he said it, Superman simply says, they're all gone. And it's this really impactful moment that I enjoyed the hell out of. And then they couple that immediately to the right by showing you the intro video for a hero called Hotspot, who's laying dead here slain. And there are continually these amazing shots, like I can't speak well enough about Clayman's art, um, where, I mean, Superman enters the, the farmhouse floating as not to touch anything, because he's being, over his comms, being told not to touch anything by Batman until Batman gets there, and Wonder Woman's telling him the same thing. So he does open the door, obviously, but he's floating. And there's a shot of him, and obviously there's lighting in the background, but he himself is basically shadowed, except his eyes. And it's spooky as hell, but the, the final shot that I most truly enjoy, just to show the emotional impact, right? Because, I mean, if an army shows up, Superman can get pissed off, Batman can get pissed off, and they can clench their fists and make a stance and take out weapons, whatever. But in this issue, in just about the what, the final page? Second last page. That's oh, right, third last page. There's a shot of Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman in the house, and they're investigating what's gone on, and Batman's standing there, you know, his cape covering his entire body, his face, most of his upper chest in shadow, and he's looking through the room at evidence. You can tell, he's just sort of clinically looking. Wonder Woman's standing there looking sort of almost in horror at what's going on while she has her arm on Superman's shoulder. And Superman, he's got his back turned to it all, and he's slumped over his head down. And just the image of it shows exactly what each of those heroes is thinking. You can see that Superman is crushed by what's happened. He set up this thing to help everyone, and someone's turned around and betrayed them. Batman, as always the detective, is simply scanning for details. 
how did this happen? Why did this happen? And Wonder Woman being their moral center is both trying to figure out what happened, but she's comforting Clark, while also grieving. And just the way the, the panels continue, those characters exude those further. Uh, so, Heroes in Crisis number one, please pick it up. I'm sure you can find it somewhere at your local comic book shop. Issue two should be out now. Please pick that up. Uh, and of course, by God, pick up the book itself when it's done uh, and collect it. should be eight months from now. So by about mid, mid next year, the hardcover ought to be coming out and you're going to want to pick up Heroes in Crisis.